All right, so here we go. Yes, the midseason patch is finally live with some significant changes, a good reason to revisit a lot of these classes and to experiment. But also, the pit has seen some changes as well. And it begs the question, is this game getting too easy as we further get into it? And yes, this patch has caused some problems. We're going to talk about that. We've got some updates on what Blizzard is doing about those issues. So I say we start there first and foremost with the most critical stuff. So we have Adam Fletcher who says this. We are seeing some crashes come from the Holy Bolt Elixir Power. For now, we are going to disable the power on this. Players can still consume the Elixir while this is happening, but we recommend to not use these as you will have no power associated with this. We are investigating the crashes and will work on a fix ASAP. We also have a follow-up, another concern. It says, Andrew's visage damage was not increased and the explosions are still happening around you invisible. Please take a look at this as well. So yeah, I also saw some Reddit threads about that one as well. So I'm pretty sure that Blizzard is aware of that. I'll let you guys know if they have any updates about that one. But yeah, most notably, there's good reason to actually revisit a lot of the classes, some significant changes, some buffs happening here. In fact, there's good reason to revisit the Boulder Druid. Pulverize, I guess, is really good right now for the Barbarian as well. And there's some other noteworthy stuff here. If you missed it, healing potions are seeing a buff, as you can see right here. Some legendary aspect changes as well. Now, the Paragon board has also seen some changes. The stat requirements for non-main stats reduced from 90 to 60 per Paragon board. It seems like a lot of people, or at least some people from what I'm seeing, are enjoying this one as well. Barbarian, this is one class that I definitely want to revisit before the season's end because it has some significant buffs here. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to try out the Whirlwind build. Damage increased by 15%. Violent Whirlwind, of course, another damage increase right there. Now for the Call of Ancients, we have Corlax the damage increase. So overall, a buff here for a lot of stuff for the Barbarian. And if we keep moving down here, we can get onto the Druid. Spirit Boons have also seen a maximum spirit increase from 20 to 40 thorns. Amount increased by 100% advantageous beasts. Side Talons, critical strike chance increased from 5% to 10%. And you can see, yeah, overall some really good buffs here. But, you know, my most noteworthy class here is definitely the Necromancer. I love the Necromancer. And yeah, most noteworthy Paragon upgrades. Blood begets blood legendary node maximum damage increase from 15 percent to 30 percent that is very significant right there so we cannot forget about the rogue we got twisting blades they increase the damage by 20 percent and then return damage increased by 20 percent as well flurry damage increased by negative 25 percent and yeah for all these classes they touch base with the paragon boards the glyphs here as you can see with the versatility glyph non-basic and non-core skill damage increased from 15 to 25 percent as well and then the explosive glyph has also seen a damage reduction increase from 10 percent to 15 percent and some legendary aspect changes here as well a lot of people still feel like they need to work on the sorcerer and they did do some things here the ice armor barrier amount increased from 30 percent of base life to 25 percent of maximum life shimmering teleport duration increased from three to four seconds and then the incinerate uh, damage reduction increased uh, from 15 to 20 percent. So overall, again, some really nice buffs. But yeah, then there's the end game. They say health and damage levels have been reduced in the pit. The adjustment is most significant as players approach tier 60, so more players can fully participate in master working. Here's a note from the devs: We're adjusting the pit so mo more players can enjoy a smoother in-game progression experience. And then all tormented bosses have had their health reduced by 30%. This includes Blood Bolts from Tormented Echo of Lilith. And this is where it stirred up some talk, some discussions about the game getting too easy. Patch over patch, people are noticing, hey, it feels like this game is getting far too easy. Here is the thread right here. It says, why are we making the same mistakes as Diablo 3? Every patch is just making things easier. Why? Why is the only challenge in the game high pit levels? We are now in Diablo 3 situation where the only reason to push the pit is to push the pit. No rewards, no point, nothing. And to top it all off, there's not even leaderboards, LOL. Now, especially with the updates, everything in the game up until like pit 70 through 80 is a cakewalk. 
Blast everything with ease, no challenge, no feeling of accomplishment. Capstone bosses are being shredded at like level 10. Once again, I feel like we have an overcorrection. You said people didn't want Diablo 2, which you missed the mark about what people wanted from Diablo 2, but people also don't want Diablo 3. Just a zoom zoom blast fest with zero challenge or reason to do anything. The overworld content is a joke. World Tier 4 is a joke. Nightmare Dungeons 100 is a joke. Pit 1 through 70, 80 is a joke. Why? Can there at least be some challenge in the level up process as well? Can you make it so we have to prepare for the capstone bosses? Please stop overcracking. I know there's a loud minority that cries about nerfs, but most people know that it is healthy for a game, especially now with tempering. This game is a joke. Please do something about this or this game will eventually die fast once people get used to and bored of the season four changes. So do you guys agree with this post or not? It seems like there are quite a bit of responses here that say, yeah, it is a bit concerning how it is getting easier as we go. And it seems like they're catering to the casual audience more than hardcore players, more than just to the 1%. Do you think Blizzard ultimately is taking the proper approach by buffing so much and perhaps lowering the difficulty in the pit with some of the bosses? I think the ultimate goal is to stretch out the pit and to make it more long lasting perhaps. I think that's what they're looking at. But I do agree that there is some content in here that just feels like it's far, far too easy. You know, I've participated in many world boss events and within seconds, the world boss is defeated. And I think these systems will be perhaps revisited as we get through Diablo Force life. At least that's what I'm hoping. And they make them far more challenging or perhaps have some sort of way to make them extremely challenging. Like I love what they did with the uh, profane mind cage, for example. Anyway, yeah, some of this content definitely does feel like a cakewalk and you're going through the motions until you hit the absolute end in game. So I definitely get where people are coming from. Let me know how you guys are enjoying season four. I will say personally, I am enjoying the hell out of season four though. Even with some of the problems that the game still has, I'm just having a blast with my necromancer for sure. But yeah, we also got to talk about this one right here. It says this, to all you people who just complain and complain, you got what you wanted. Why do you guys like being spoon fed so much? Making stuff way too easy does not make anything better. You're now just playing a watered down version of the game, happens every patch too, so I'm not surprised. And I'm not talking about the buffs they did to the underused builds. And some of the community is honestly tired about all the complaints. It says you're complaining about complainers. And then we also have, if the game is so easy, just wear blue gear and make it harder. <laughs> it says Frenzy got an 8% damage buff, but I'm finally going to be viable. So, you know, there's buffs and some cool things happening that do allow you to experiment within your class. So I really do like that approach at the very least to offer some sort of experimentation midway through a season. I get where you guys are coming from. If the game is just too easy, you kind of like, lose interest if you aren't challenged throughout that level up process and mentioning the mundane it seems like a lot of you are feeling that way about strongholds it says not sure if this is an unpopular opinion but we should not have to keep doing strongholds they fix the renown problem we don't have to keep doing that over and over why do we have to keep doing strongholds for legion events no one cares about those at least in my opinion please let us do them all at once and then that's it. Then we got this reply. It says, you're going to find there's a number of people that think strongholds are amazing and should be added upon. I'm not one of them, but it is a common thread here. Personally, they don't bother me. I do them when I pour out of Nightmare Dungeons and one is nearby. Otherwise, I ignore them. Except that stupid, stupid fire one that makes you wait through dialogue for 25 minutes, uh, Ermond or something. I hate that one. The rest take like two minutes to complete and our little break, so leave them, remove them, meh, not a big deal. So some people are feeling like, hey, if you keep them, if you remove them, it's not really a big deal. But yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I feel like there's a lot of potential for them to do something very, very cool in the future with Strongholds. They could do a lot of stuff with that, but I get where you guys are coming from. Honestly, I'm really enjoying the hell out of Hell Tides. No pun intended there, but uh, Nightmare Dungeons are also a lot of fun to run, at least in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Helltide for me is where it's at. Uh, I think they did a wonderful job 
with actually improving hell tides and the sheer amount of chaos that goes on screen and teaming up it's just a lot of fun playing hell tides right now uh in my opinion i think they should just keep going in that direction when it comes to a lot of the content they could do a lot with strongholds just keep mirroring what they're doing here with hell tides and work that outward into some of the other events throughout the world including strongholds that sort of thing but my opinion is if you're going to run strongholds it should be viable it should be something that you feel like you're getting a reward from so they're going to have to do something different with a reward system with strongholds it shouldn't be like where you absolutely have to run this content no matter what if you don't want to do it you shouldn't be absolutely forced yeah so we'll have to wait and see what blizzard ultimately decides to do with strongholds it's going to be up to them of course but yeah there's another topic here about tempering uh perhaps they need to do some adjustments with this one so check it out here it says season four is the best yet but tempering broke me tonight have all classes at level 100 and rogue was last for me tonight start the typical hell tides nightmare dungeons pit grind for greater fix items and after breaking my fourth greater fix bow in a row on another level 100 character i had a moment where i just stared blankly at my screen i'm done season four was fun of no i like the new tempering system but it needs a rework it seems like yeah it can be uh devastating to essentially get through the tempering process and ultimately uh brick your item we have this right here ronin who says it's amazing how fast you go from excited to completely heartbroken when you brick an item makes me insane yep this is not blizzard material with their whole concept of getting many people to play and feel good they kind of miss the mark with the rage quit inducing mechanic yeah sometimes a lot of these systems to be blind remind me of gambling i think that's the idea to keep you in the game for as long as possible it just seems like uh they are padded i guess you would say to try to keep you in there as long as possible for sure and i think a lot of people are noticing this when it comes to certain systems so yeah now also someone did talk about the expansion and some hopes about that one so check it out it says i hope vessel of hatred includes new cosmetics i can get by playing the game and i don't just mean trophies and mounts it says give me complete armor sets i can farm from uber bosses a fancy and expensive armor set i can slowly craft piece by piece with gold gems and materials at the town an actual full armor set for completing the renown of a region one per region one time thing not seasonal not once per class weapon cosmetics headstones and town portals i can get from certain side quests new rare cosmetics i can get as random drops and new tattoos and pets for completing achievements etc you know that would be really really cool but i also think it's uh blizzard's ultimate goal to get you into the game pass and of course their shop so yeah i think uh when it comes to finding items in the world i wouldn't hold your breath too much it would be cool if they took this path but I'm just saying, like, keep your feelings guarded about that one. I would love to see that. But realistically, they want you in the shop. They want you at the battle pass, which is a shame. It would be cool if they embedded more cosmetic type items, like you're saying. Even, like, have a crafting system for it uh, in the actual game. In the gameplay, it would make exploring a lot more meaningful. But, yeah, there it is. The latest happenings around Diablo 4. Let me know how you guys are enjoying the mid-season patch and season 4 overall. Yeah, you know, I'm having a hell of a time with my Necromancer. So yeah, I'm going to keep pushing my Necromancer as far as possible. Let's see what we can do. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Take care.